afternoon, Ms. Hurd. Good afternoon. Mr. Depp hasn't looked at you once this entire trial, has he? Not that I've noticed, no. You've looked at him, though, many times, haven't you? Yes, I have. You know exactly why Mr. Depp won't look back at you, don't you? I do. He promised you he would never, you would never see his eyes again. Isn't that true? I don't recall if he said that. One of the last times you ever saw Mr. Depp was when you met him in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? That was the second to last time I saw him, yes. And this was after you had publicly accused him of domestic violence. I got my restraining order before that, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is after you had obtained the domestic violence restraining order against him. That's correct. Let's please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 1229. Um, for the record, it's at 1101 through 1209. I'm going to ask that it be admitted into evidence. Any objection to 1229? Yes. All right, 1229, you want to enter in its entirety? Yes, please. Okay, 1229 entered in its entirety. Go ahead and play your section. Can I don't understand. Is this what you want? No. Oh, no, a hug will save it all. I just wanted to touch you. That is. And this is from when you and Mr. Depp met in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? Yes, that's what it sounds like. That was in the hotel. We met once after that as well. This is after you publicly accused him of domestic abuse? Uh, yes, and got my TRO. Yeah. And he tells you you will not see my eyes again, doesn't he? Uh, yes, he does in that recording. And he kept that promise, hasn't he? As far as I know, he cannot look at me. He won't look at you, right, Ms. Hurd? He can't. One of the first questions your counsel asked you on direct is, why are you here? Do you remember that? I do. Let's please play plaintiff exhibit 357A, which is already in evidence, Your Honor. Right. And for the record, it's 2122 through 2140. That's your voice on that recording, right? Yes, it is. And you were speaking with Mr. Depp? Yes. And you said to Mr. Depp, quote, you can tell, you can please tell people that it was a fair fight and see what the jury and the judge think. Tell the world, Johnny, tell them Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, a man, a victim too of domestic violence, end quote. That's what you said, right? I was saying it to the man who beat me up, yes. I thought it was preposterous. And the man you beat up numerous times. <laughs> right, Mr. I could never hurt Johnny. You're here in this courtroom because Mr. Depp finally told the world that he is a victim of domestic violence. I know that he is suing me um, and has sued other people or corporations that have said that as well. You didn't think he would tell the world he was a victim of domestic violence, did you? I found it hard to believe that he could or that he would do that considering the relationship he and I had. I, 
I thought it would be crazy for him to do so, knowing what I know we lived through. Or, as you said to him in that recording, who was going to believe that Johnny Depp, a man, is a victim of domestic violence, right? With all due respect, I wasn't saying it because he's a man. I was saying it because he was a man who beat me up for five years. Mr. Depp is your victim, isn't he? <sighs> no, ma'am. And once he left you, you continued to abuse him publicly by calling him an abuser, didn't you? He is an abuser, and you can look either of us up online and figure out who's being abused online. Let's look at some of that. Mr. Depp wears rings on every finger, doesn't he, Miss Heard? That's my experience, yes. And they're not delicate rings, are they? Uh, no, they are not. Every one of his fingers is adorned, your words, big, chunky rings. Isn't that right? That's my experience of him. And Mr. Depp is always wearing rings, right, Miss Heard? That's my experience of him. And you've never known him not to wear these rings? And that's my experience, is he normally wore rings, yes. So, Mr. Depp was wearing these big, chunky rings on every finger, every incident of abuse you've described to this jury, right? I can't say for certain it was in every single incident. But you've never known him not to wear rings, right? In general, um, my experience with Johnny is that he, will, he wears rings almost all the time. Ms. Heard, do you recall giving testimony in a deposition in this matter in uh, January of this year? I do. Can we please play from your deposition, day two, 512, page 512, lines 11 through 15? He's still with us, criminal defense attorneys Josh Schiffer and Jack Rice. Jack, let me turn to you. What do you think so far? The cross. Wow. What did you? What was your reaction? Primacy and recency. Right. The very first thing you say is what the jury's going to remember. He never looks you in the eye, and you know why, don't you? This is about his attorney testifying. She might as well climb up in the box and say, "You can just shut up and sit aside because I have a lot to tell this jury," and she's telling him. And she's doing it the way we teach in trial skills, which is one fact, one statement that they then, um, you know, kind of ask as a question, but it's to get it all out there. So, Josh, you're staying with us. Jack, you're staying with us. We do have to take a break. Now, we are going to be taking you back into that courtroom for cross-examination. You're not going to miss anything. Let's just recap a little bit because they are under a timer. The court has only given them so much time. And I would suggest Amber Heard has about 20 hours left to present her case. Now that it's cross-examination, this is time off Johnny Depp's clock. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Ashley Wilcott. Good Monday afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us. This trial is something else. Of course, I'm referring to Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. He is suing her for defamation, and she, Amber Heard, is countersuing against Johnny Depp for defamation. He's asked for $50 million. She's asked for $100 million. So far today, we've watched direct examination continuing from the week before last when they were doing their direct. Direct examination is for the witness, in this case Amber Heard, to provide a narrative of what she's been through. Well, she did that. And let me tell you something. Cross-examination just started right before the break and a Depp's attorney came out swinging. She brought out first from the very get-go, the first thing she brought out, hey, Johnny Depp can't even look at you, yet you look at him throughout the trial. Let's go back into the courtroom. You haven't missed any of the testimony and see what else she's going to bring out. Rings on every finger. I don't know if I've ever known Johnny to not wear rings. Yeah. <clears throat> Ms. Heard, you testified to an incident in March of 2013 where Mr. Depp hit you in the face multiple times. Do you recall that? That's correct. And you testified, quote, you don't know how many times he hit you in the face. 
That's correct. Okay. So Mr. Depp hit you in the face multiple times while he was wearing rings on this occasion, correct? Which occasion in March are you referencing? You weren't The specific. testimony that you gave on day 15 of this trial, March of 2013, you weren't specific as to the day. There were several incidents. The one where he hit you several times in the face. Uh, there were, there were, so, I'm sorry, just so I understand better. There were several incidents in March. Which one are you asking me about? The time that he hit you several times in the face wearing rings. Well, he pretty in much March always. March 2013. Right. What are you asking me? I'm sorry. He was wearing rings on that occasion? I pretty much always knew him to wear rings. Okay, let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 170A, which is already in evidence, Your Honor. You testified that this is a picture you took after that incident, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, that was one where he grabbed me. And hit you in the face so many times that you don't remember. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And there's no injuries to your face in this picture, are there? Not that this picture shows. And there's no medical records reflecting that you sought treatment after this alleged incident either. I did not seek medical treatment at this time. So there's no medical records reflecting any injuries to your face after he hit you several times. I did not need to go to the doctor at the time. Despite hitting you several times that you lost count with rings on, your fi on his fingers. That's correct. I did not seek medical attention other than my therapist. You testified to another incident in March of 2013 where Mr. Depp hit you while he was wearing a lot of rings. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, ma'am. And you testified you felt like your lip went through your teeth and it got a little blood on the wall. Yes, okay. I remember that. There isn't a picture of you with injuries after that alleged incident, is there? I don't know if I've seen one. Um, I, I can't recall. There are a lot of pictures. You didn't produce any photographs after that alleged incident, did you, I, Ms. I don't know if I took one or if it's included. I'm not, I'm not quite sure which ones. You didn't show any pictures to this jury after describing that alleged incident that your teeth, your lip went into your teeth. You don't remember that, right? I, you didn't I show don't... any pictures to this jury after describing that incident, right? I don't believe I've seen that picture admitted. That picture doesn't exist. I, I don't know which one you're talking about. There were, we have pictures from March 2013, yes. The only picture that you've produced and shown to this jury is the one that was just put up on the screen where you said he hit you multiple times in the face and you appear to have what is a bruise on your arm, correct? I believe this is the only picture that's in evidence right now. That's the only picture you've shown to this jury from March 2013, correct? I believe so. You testified about an incident in Russia on or about June 26, 2013. Do you remember that? Uh, yes, that's correct. You testified that Mr. Depp, quote, whacked you in the face. That's correct. And you went to the bathroom after that, right? I did. And then, according to your testimony, when you came out of the bathroom, Jerry Judge, Mr. Depp's security guard, who's passed away, pointed out that your nose was bleeding, right? He did that in the hallway. And you said you hadn't known that your nose was bleeding until Jerry Judge pointed it out to you? Yes, that's correct. I was unaware until he brought it up to me. I didn't see it when I was in the bathroom, but I wasn't looking. So, so it's your testimony that you went into the bathroom and didn't look in the mirror, which I assume was in the bathroom, to notice that your nose was bleeding? That's not why I went into the bathroom. I went into the bathroom um, crying. I, I don't even know if I paid attention to the mirror. I certainly didn't enough to notice any blood. And you didn't take any pictures of your bloody nose either, did you? I did not. But pictures were taken of you in Russia, though. Isn't that correct? Yes, that, that's correct. We had a press or a dinner. Um, let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1248. Ms. Heard, this is a picture of you and Mr. Depp in Russia, correct? That's correct. I'm going to move to admit. Okay. All right, no objection. One, two, four, eight in evidence. You can publish. And this is you and Mr. Depp in Russia for the Lone Ranger premiere, correct? It was a dinner function, I believe, for in promotion of the movie. 
wasn't the premiere, if I recall. You don't have any visible injuries to your face, do you? None that you can see. Um, let's look at plaintiff's exhibit 1249. This is a picture of you, isn't it, right? That's correct. I'm going to move to exhib no admit right. exhibit 1249. All right, 1249 in evidence. This is also a picture from when you were in Russia for the Lone Ranger premiere, right? That is correct. And you have no visible injuries to your face, do you? None that you can see. Even though Mr. Depp whacked you in the face so hard that your nose bled? Uh, he did. While wearing chunky big rings, right? That's correct. You also testify that Mr. Dept again, walked you in the face after the Met Gala in May of 2014, right? That is correct. You testified that you thought he hit you so hard, he broke your nose. That's correct. You said your nose was, quote, swollen, discolored, red. That is correct. I took a picture of that. You testified you took a picture of your face after this. I did. But you didn't show that picture to the jury, did you? I would like to. But you didn't show it, did you? That's not up to me. I understand you were under an obligation to produce all photographs after any alleged incidents of violence, right, Ms. Hurd? I produced everything. You didn't produce any photographs after the Met Gala? I produced everything. Okay. You also understand that you're under an obligation to produce all medical records reflecting any injuries you allegedly sustained from Mr. Depp, correct? And that's correct. And you haven't produced any pictures or any medical records reflecting a broken nose after the Met Gala in May of 2014, have you? I have given everything to my lawyers, everything. I've turned over literally everything that I have. Is that your testimony, Ms. Heard, that you sought medical treatment after Mr. Depp allegedly broke your nose after the Met Gala? Not after the Met Gala. I did not seek medical attention, no. You also attended an event after the Met Gala in May of 2014, didn't you? That is correct. And you went to the all-star comedy tribute to Don Rickles. That is correct. That was the next night after the Met Gala. That is correct. And there were pictures of you taken at this event. Yes. Let's pull, please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1252. This is a picture of you, Ms. Hurd? Yes, it is. At that event? Yes, it is. The night after the Met Gala? Yes, it is. The night after Mr. Depp allegedly broke your nose? Uh, I'm not sure if it was broken, for the record. But, yeah, you should see what it looked like underneath the makeup. He whacked you so hard in the face that you thought you had broken your nose. Exactly. Right. Um, permission to admit this photograph? All right, one, two, five, two. In evidence. This is a picture of you, Mr. Depp, and Don Rickles, right? That is correct. Let's please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1253. This is another picture from that evening, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, it is. Permission to admit exhibit 1253 and publish it. All right, so moved. One, two, five, three in evidence. This is a picture of you and Mr. Depp at the event the night after Mr. Depp allegedly whacked you in the face so hard you thought he had broken your nose. He did whack me in the face, and I did think it broke my nose. And this is you the night after? Yes, it is. Let's please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1254. This is also a picture of you at the same event, correct, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. Move to admit plaintiff's exhibit 1254. All right, 1254 in evidence. You can publish. Thank you. And just to confirm now that the jury can see it, 
This is a picture of you at the same event, the night after Mr. Depp allegedly whacked you in the face so hard you thought he broke your nose. Uh, this is a picture of me um, after he did whack me in the face. The night after, right? Yes, it is. I believe it was the night after, yes. Your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Ms. Hurd? I'm wearing makeup. Your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Ms. Hurd? That's why I'm wearing makeup. Right. And makeup covers up swelling, right? Makeup will not cover up swelling. Ice will, though. Ice will cover up swelling? Ice reduces swelling. Normally, the swelling after that kind of injury is not as bad as you would, might imagine. And for me, it wasn't that bad. I have a picture of it underneath the makeup. That's how I know how to reference it. A picture you haven't produced or shown to this jury, right, Ms. Hurd? I absolutely, I've produced everything. But you haven't shown it to this jury? I would very much like to. It's not my job. Your Honor, may we approach? Yes, that's fine. So many things to say and think about during this cross-examination. One of the most notable, Amber Heard just testified that although Johnny Heard hit her in the face so hard that her nose was broken, punched her with rings, then we saw those pictures that didn't look like there'd been any injuries and she said, oh, they weren't visible. This is cross-examination you don't want to miss. We're going to hit the pause button. When we come back, we're going to take you back into this courtroom. Hard work pays off. Let's get you back into the courtroom. Just a refresher of where we are, cross-examination. You haven't missed any of the testimony. And again, Johnny Depp wearing the rings. However, no injuries are visible in pictures that they are showing to the jury the same day that she was allegedly punched in the face by Johnny Depp. Let's go back to court. Sidebar, not an unusual occurrence. Let me bring back in Josh Schiffer, Jack Rice. All right, Josh, what are your thoughts about this cross-examination so far? I, I think it's been absolutely the powerful gripping moment that people have been waiting for because it's finally the first time where Amber has to answer to the allegations that she has made that caused Mr. Depp all of the damages he's claiming. And what Jack was talking about earlier, and you've talked about this entire trial, that authenticity, that truthfulness, that's going to be hard for any juror who just watched that exchange. Miss Heard testified that she was punched in the face by a man wearing heavy, chunky rings and within 24 hours looked like a beautiful China doll at one of the most watched events in the world of fashion. Now, I, I'm not going to call anybody. I'm not going to defame anybody. That did not feel truthful to me. All right, Jack, what about with you? Did the used ice to reduce the swelling, makeup to conceal, fly with you? No, it, it just didn't. Again, this is about authenticity and credibility. If somebody uses brass knuckles on your face where you hit them so hard and so many times that you lose count, tell me, is there going to be a mark, a scratch? How much blood, how many broken bones, how many orbital bones are broken, let alone your nose? I mean, this just does not fly. And I think there's going to be a lot of people on the jury who will say, if I don't buy this, if there were other things that I kind of bought, I start to undercut all of those claims too. That's what she risks when she simply says, I was perfect, he did everything, I was perfect. Don't forget, don't forget, did I tell you? I, oh yeah, I was perfect. All right, love your analysis. We do have to go back to the courtroom, gentlemen. Let's go back at continuing cross-examination. Ms. Heard, you testified that in January of 2015, there was an incident in Tokyo before uh, Mr. Depp's Mordecai, the film Mordecai's premiere. Is that correct? That's correct. And you told this jury that on this occasion, Mr. Depp was kneeling on your back. That's correct, in the closet. And you also told this jury that you wore a backless dress to the Mordecai premiere that very same night. I did. And you testified that you were 
checking for bruises in the car on the way back, on the way to the event to make sure that there, there were, quote, no visible marks, right? I was checking on my phone um, after the event to see, to make sure that nothing, they couldn't see anything. Your testimony was that you were checking in the car on the way to the event to make sure that there were no marks on your back. Uh, perhaps I misspoke or misunderstood. It was on the way back from it was after I was concerned. After, you know, concerned that there would be marks in any photographs since we were being photographed at Johnny's press event. And you didn't show this jury a picture of you in that backless dress, though, did you? Um, I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. You didn't show this jury a picture of you at the Mordecai premiere wearing a backless dress, did you? I haven't had the opportunity to. Okay. I assume you have it. I do. Um, let's please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1256. <laughs> This is a picture of you and Mr. Depp, or the back of you, at the Mordecai premiere in Tokyo, correct, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. Your Honor, I move to admit and publish this picture. All right, one, two, five, six in evidence. This is you in the backless dress at the Mordecai premiere in Tokyo, right? That is correct. And you would agree that there are no bruises or visible marks on your back in this picture? No, not that I could see. I'll show you one other photo. If we could please have plaintiff's exhibit 1257. This is a front angle picture of you and Mr. Depp at that premiere, correct? That is correct. Move to admit plaintiff's exhibit one, two, five, seven. Okay. All right, one, two, five, seven, and it I'll show you one more picture. Plaintiff's exhibit one, two, five, eight. And again, Ms. Heard, this is you and Mr. Dab at the Mordecai premiere? Yes, it is. Move to admit plaintiff's exhibit 1258. No objection. All right, 1258 in evidence. Publish. And that's the backless dress, right, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. You also told this jury about an incident in Australia in March of 2015. Yes, that's correct. You testified that after this alleged incident, you had cuts on your forearms, right? Yes, that's true. And you testified that you had cuts on the bottoms of your feet as well. Yes, that's true. And you testified that you had a bruise across your jaw from when Mr. Depp, quote, clocked you in the face, end quote. That's true. You didn't take any pictures of these injuries while you were in Australia, did you? I don't think, no, I don't think I took any pictures. You just took two pictures of Mr. Depp's writing on a mirror. Isn't that right? I believe so, yes. So you had your phone on you, right? At some point I did have my phone. And your iPad? I had my iPad, I believe. And you testified that you were also raped with a liquor bottle in Australia, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes. You testified you bled from your vagina as a result of that sexual assault. Yes. There aren't any medical records reflecting that you sought medical treatment for any of these injuries, are there? I did not seek uh, medical treatment after Australia, no. Not for the rape? No, I did not want to tell anyone. Not for the cuts? No. Not for the injuries to your face? I didn't need to. You also told the jury about an incident on December 15, 2015, right? Uh, where, I'm sorry? December 15, 2015. Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> you told this jury that after this incident, you had a broken nose. It certainly felt like it. Ms. Heard, do you recall giving testimony on day 16th in this trial? <coughs> you were yes, on youth, right? Yes. Did you have a transcript? 
for the jury, or excuse me, for the witness. Okay. All right. We'll we'll get it. Thank you, Judy. All right, quick question. How long, for each of you, how long do you think cross-examination might last? You know, they're supposed to be stopping a little bit later. They've added things. They're doing so well. There's a lot of lawyers that say, if you're winning, sit down and just leave it be. In my opinion, what, what we've just watched, her credibility has been severely damaged with this jury. I wouldn't be able to sit down, Jack. In the last 15 seconds, would you sit down or keep going? I've got more. If I know I've got this, I'm testifying, not her. And she's going to be getting more and more vertigo, trying to stand up. And I'm going to keep knocking her down. That's just how it works when you're doing cross. That's right. That's right. Trial skills that we've all talked about, taught, done. All right. Well, stay with us. We are going to take you back into that courtroom. You will not miss any of the testimony when we come back from a short break. We'll see what else happens during cross-examination. Calibrate.com. Mr. Depp hasn't looked at you once this entire trial, has he? Not that I've noticed, no. You've looked at him, though, many times, haven't you? Yes, I have. You know exactly why Mr. Depp won't look back at you, don't you? I do. He promised you he would never, you would never see his eyes again. Isn't that true? I don't recall if he said that. You just witnessed a strong start to a cross-examination of Amber Heard. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Judge Ashley Wilcott. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Of course, we're bringing you the trial of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard in Virginia. Cross-examination is still underway. You've not missed any testimony. We did hit the pause button. Camille Vesquez, who is the attorney that is representing Johnny Depp during this cross-examination, is doing a very effective job using either pictures that have not yet been admitted into evidence or the fact there are no pictures during this cross of Amber Heard. Let's go back to court. approach the witness, Your Honor? All right. Yes, ma'am. And would you like a coffee? Yes, please. please. All right. We just heard another objection, another sidebar. We're going to talk over this. Um, all right, Josh, in terms of what else you might expect during this cross? Are there any other things that come to mind? Yeah, well, they've got about an hour left before the judge had announced that she wanted to close it in for the day. So we, we don't believe they're going to stop and end as much as that might be a good idea. As long as Mr. Depp's team can continue to show another example followed by another example of apparently conflicting stories and proof. It's not that Ms. Heard didn't make reports or say things. It's that, and what Ms. Vasquez is illustrating, is that the pictures that were contemporaneous, sourced from other, other places, they don't show what Ms. Heard has previously relied on and testified to. So they're going to wrap with that, I think, tonight, rather than go into a subsequent deconstruction of her claim, which will, I believe, happen tomorrow. All right, let's go back to the courtroom. Yes? Starting on line eight. I thought I probably had a concussion and certainly thought, excuse me, strike that, let's start over. I thought I had, I thought I probably had a concussion and certainly that I had a broken nose. There was a blood everywhere, blood all over the pillows. My head was bleeding from the ripped out hair, chunks of hair on the floor, all over the place actually. So lines nine, that I had a broken nose. Do you re recall giving that testimony, Ms. Heard? Yes, exactly. So you had a broken nose, right? That's absolutely what I thought. And you told the jury that you had two black eyes after this incident, right? I did have two black eyes after that incident. 
And you testified that you also had a busted lip from when Mr. Depp punched you. That is uh, correct. From December, yes, that's correct. You testified that the lip wound kept reopening when you moved your mouth. That's correct. You also testified that you had bruising on your temple. That's correct. And bruising on your chin. Correct. You also testified that your head was bleeding from where Mr. Depp ripped chunks of your hair out. I remember, yes. And that you had, quote, gross pussy, end quote, bruising around your temple. Uh, in my scalp, yeah. Now, for this incident, you did take pictures, correct? That's correct. And we will look at some of those in a minute, but I first want to talk to you about your appearance on The James Corden Show. Sure. Can I close this? Sure. You appeared on The James Corden Show the day after this alleged incident, right? I did. And that was December 16th, 2015? Yes, that's correct. Let's please pull up a clip of your appearance from that evening. If we could, Plaintiff's Exhibit 35. And for the record, we will only be playing a portion of this, so we will call it uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 35A. All right, any objection? No. Uh, 35A in evidence. I grew up, you know, in Texas riding horses and... Oh, really? You know... Uh, Not a big ballet community out there in Texas. Mm, uh, yeah, no, no, not so much. Shooting guns, yes, but ballet, no. <laughs> I wanted to train for it, and there were some ballet sequences that, that um, we wanted to have the option to, to incorporate into the movie, so I trained forever, and I have two left feet. I'm the most klutzy person in the world, and I have no, um, what do you call it? Grace? Right. So I knew, <laughs> Your Honor, I'm so sorry, train for, but it's not published to the jury. If we may have it, oh. please publish. Okay, thank you. Apologies. If we can please start Are that over. Start it over, I'm sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. I grew up, you know, in Texas riding horses and... Oh, really? You know... Uh, Not a big ballet community out there in mm, Texas. No, uh, yeah, no, no, not so much. Shooting guns, yes, but ballet, no. <laughs> so I wanted to train for it, and there were some ballet sequences that, that um, we wanted to have the option to, to incorporate into the movie, so I trained forever, and I have two left feet. I'm the most klutzy person in the world, and I have no, um, what do you call... Grace? <laughs> so I knew... <laughs> I knew I had to train for it, and what they don't tell you, I mean, I, in, I crammed about three months of solid training in, and I'm kind of like working my way up from the floor and learning the technical aspect of ballet, and I've got these dances down technically perfectly, I'm learning all the movements, but the last thing we get to are the hands. <gasps> And I haven't yet got to that point, but everything else is working. I'm acting it up on my face, and I'm selling the ballet. And I think I'm doing really good at this point, kind of nailing it. And so I send videos and, and images to my friends to, like, get encouragement and look for their support. And everyone shoots back, what? with the claw hand. <laughs> and I look and I realize like all the stress and fear of performing and doing this thing had just kind of like funneled out through the one thing that I hadn't yet like so What were your hands so doing? I'd, so I'd be doing this amazing, you know, I'd be doing a, like a, a jump with a back bend and uh -huh. you can see this like graceful falling and my hands are like... <laughs> My face, though, is like I've got that, you saw in the clip, like this beautiful 1920s, you know, ma stage makeup on and ha like ha flower crowns and all this uh -huh. stuff. And then my hand, and my face, <laughs> and then my hands. <laughs> that was you on the James Corden show on December 16th, 2015, right, Miss Heard? That was. Let's please pull up Plain Physics Exhibit 98. These are pictures of you on the James Corden show on December 16th, 2015, right, Ms. Heard? They look like freeze frames, um, like screen grabs, stills. They're not like a, it's not like a photo shoot, it doesn't seem. But on the James Corden show, correct? From that appearance, yes. Yeah. Um, move to admit and publish Plaintiff's Exhibit 98. Any objections? All right, and Ms. Bernhoff, you could move the microphone and turn it on for you so Judy and I are having trouble hearing you. Sorry about that. All right, thank you. All right, 98 in evidence. Thank you. That's a photo of you opening your mouth on the right 
right? That's correct. And again, an, a larger view of the same photo on the bottom. That's correct. With a split lip. You've seen pictures of it without makeup. Yes. So you had a split lip when you I were sure moving did. your mouth that way. I sure did. In those photographs. Absolutely. Okay. You did take pictures of your alleged injuries on, after December 15th, correct? And you showed those to the jury? I sure did, yes. Okay. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 516, which is already in evidence. You testified that this is a picture of you after the incident on December 15th, 2015, right? It was. And if we could also please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 517, which is also in evidence. That's fine. Thank you, Your Honor. This is also a picture of you after the incident on December 15th, 2015. That's correct. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 409, which is already in evidence. These pictures ended up in People Magazine in June of 2016. Isn't that right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. You gave these pictures to People Magazine after you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic abuse, didn't you? I didn't personally, know. This was you protecting Mr. Depp after you got the restraining order against him, isn't it? No, this is him calling me a liar and me forcing to prove it, as I mentioned to you earlier. So you did give these pictures to People Magazine? No, I gave these um, pictures actually to my lawyers and my representatives at the time. Um, so it's your testimony, Ms. Heard, that your lawyers and representatives gave these pictures of their client to People Magazine in the middle of a contentious divorce? I certainly did not personally give it, no. You also have a medical record from after the December 15th, 2015 incident, don't you? A partial one, yes. You went to see Dr. Kipper's office a couple days later. That's right. He wasn't in the office. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 47, which is already in evidence? This is your medical record for December 17th, 2015, isn't it, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And this record doesn't document any physical injuries on you, does it? I, I, I don't think so, no. I, I don't think I spoke to Kipper. I didn't speak to Kipper um, that day. And but you went I didn't, to Dr. Kipper's office and were seen, correct? I went to, Dr. Kipper, went to Dr. Kipper's office for a concussion check. Right, okay. And this medical record is from that visit, correct? Partially, yes. Scroll down, please, if we could. The signature, Kipper, down below. So this is the entirety of the medical record. Right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, what I meant by partial is I didn't talk about what happened to me. I didn't get into my injuries. I didn't get into what happened or um, ask for anything other than should I get some sort of scan done. Right, but this record doesn't document any physical injuries on you, does it? Uh, I'd have to read it in full, but I, I don't know. Well, let's do that. We could please go, well, under skin on the second page. It reads intact, normal color, moisture, hair distribution, texture, turgor. No signs of, oh, this is going to be hard, cyanosis. Motling jaundice. It also says I'm a well-nourished male. Right. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I, I think this medical record's missing a lot of things. Yeah, but it doesn't document any physical injuries. Doesn't seem to be documenting anything. 
probably because there was nothing to document, right, Ms. Hurd? I disagree with you on that. You don't have any medical records reflecting that you broke your nose during your relationship with Mr. Depp, do you? Uh, I saw an ENT after my relationship ended. And you saw an ENT, it's your testimony under oath that you saw an ENT for broken noses that you sustained as a result of Mr. Depp? No, but the ENT told me I sustained objection. multiple fractures. No, I'm going to move to strike. I'll sustain the objection. I'll move to strike. Thank you. So again, just to try my question, there's no medical records reflecting that you broke your nose during your relationship with Mr. Depp. Is there a misheard? I don't know what made it in evidence, but I do know that I documented that um, visit and that everything was given to my attorneys. Ms. Hurd, you never went to see any doctor or surgeon to treat a broken nose during your relationship with Mr. Depp. Yes or no? I never sought treatment for broken nose while I was with Johnny. Or after you were with Mr. Depp as a result of any injuries you sustained as a result of Mr. Depp? Afterwards, yes, I did. And you didn't produce those medical records in this case? I would object, Your Honor. She did. I did. I, I don't know. All right. They have not been produced, Your Honor. They have not only All right, been if you would do, so. come on approach. It's a serious allegation to claim that opposing counsel failed to comply with discovery and didn't produce medical records. They've gone up for a sidebar. It's a perfect opportunity to take a break. When we come back, of course, we'll hit the pause button and bring you more of cross-examination of Amber Heard at lapaplasty.com. Cross-examine continues of Amber Heard. Let's take you back to court. You haven't missed any of the testimony. You don't have any medical records reflecting that you require any dental work during your relationship with Mr. Depp, do you? Uh, I don't know. I don't, rec I don't recall. You don't recall one way or another seeking dental care for any injuries you allegedly sustained? Uh, you asked me about if I had produced records or if I had records. That's a different question. Did you ever see a dentist or an oral surgeon as yeah. a result of any injuries you sustained with Mr. Depp? Not about any injury I had from Johnny, no. And you don't have any medical records reflecting that you required any reconstructive work during your relationship with Mr. Depp, do you? I never required reconstructive work, so there would be no records. What you do have, Ms. Hurd, are pictures of Mr. Depp sleeping, though, right? The jury saw a lot of those. Yes. Okay. Ms. Hurd, let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1090, which is already in evidence. You took this photograph, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And you testified that this was taken in Tokyo in July of 2013, correct? Yes. So you decided to take a picture of Mr. Depp asleep on the floor? He was passed out. That's a yes. And I took a picture of him because he uh, wouldn't remember. He claimed he didn't pass out that way. And sometimes security would carry him like a baby into bed, get him changed, and he would be none the wiser. So I started taking pictures of it so that he knew that it was real, that it had gotten this bad. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1091, which is already in evidence. You took this picture as well? Yes. And this is the picture that was taken in the Bahamas, right? It's one of them, yes. And this is a picture of Mr. Depp taking a nap on his tropical island? I believe he was on the nod, but as he would say. Sleeping on the nod they're, on his island? They're very different, in my opinion. And okay. yes, he is on the island. Right. On vacation? Uh, we were on vacation, yes. Okay. Let's also take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1092, which is also in evidence. 
Melissa took this picture, right, Miss Hurd? That's correct. I did. And this is another picture of Mr. Depp asleep in a chair? No, he was um, nodding off. Uh, sleep is different. When you're nodding off, you're high on drugs, didn't even feel the cigarette in his hand that had, you know, been burning on his leg. Uh, it was cause for alarm for me, naturally, um, because I cared about him. Uh, it's your testimony under oath that Mr. Depp is holding a cigarette in this picture? He had been. You seem to really like taking pictures of Mr. Depp while he's sleeping, don't you? I hated it. I hated it. Let's look at Defendant's Exhibit 1094, which is also in evidence. You took this picture of Mr. Depp as well, didn't you? I did. You decided to take a picture of Mr. Depp asleep with ice cream spilled all over him, right? He was nodding off and um, I was worried about how bad the medications and the medication change and the drug use had gotten where he wouldn't even feel ice cream or a lit cigarette on him and it scared me. So you really. took a picture of it? Yes, I, um, I wanted him to get help and Johnny's surrounded by enablers who clean up after him. Objection, and protect Your Honor, him. I'm going to move to strike everything after yes. All right, we're going to take a break as we're getting close to the top of the hour. Josh Shiver, Jack Rice, your final thirds, thoughts, Josh, about the cross-examination and the trial as a whole. I, I don't want to close my eyes. This is everything that the case has been about. We've all known it from the very beginning. The lawyers have said it. The cross-examinations of the two main litigants, that's going to determine this case. And Mr. Depp's team is making a very strong showing right now. Doesn't mean Ms. Hurd can't recover. But it's looking tough. And Jack, I'm on the edge of my seat. And we're all texting each other the whole time. Can you believe this? Can you believe that? Final thoughts. <laughs> no. I, I feel like a horse at the gate at the Kentucky Derby. I'm like, Pfft. I just want to get out into it myself. There's so much here. And they're coming at her again and again and again. And it's all about credibility the entire time. They have to make sure that they can shut down the damages piece, too. They're going to have time to do that. But they need to do that, too. They do need to do that, too. Are they going to run out of time? Because the judge has them under a time limit. All right, don't go anywhere. Thank you, of course, to Josh Schiffer, Jack Rice, for being with us today. Also want to thank all of you at home for joining joining us. Michael Ayala is going to take it from here. You will not miss a thing. More of the Depp trial here on Court TV, your front row seat to justice. Nine now. Hello and welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Michael Ayala. It's the day we've all been waiting for. Amber Heard back on the stand and well, folks, it did not disappoint. Io said, Amber, get out of the house. Get out of the house now. You're not safe. Get out of that house. Heard doubled down on Johnny's alleged abuse, detailing instance after instance of violence that she says her ex-husband inflicted upon her. He was squeezing my neck against the railway car for what felt like a very long time and every time he kind of would pull me away from the side of the car he'd slam me up against my slam me up against the wall and I remember looking down at him and trying to get his arms off of my neck uh, and I remember thinking that he could he could not even mean to kill me Amber Heard remains on the stand facing cross examination let's get you right back into that court The question was, did you take this picture? All right, I'll sustain the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. This isn't a very flattering picture of Mr. Depp, is it? No, it's not. You wouldn't agree that this is, or you would agree with me that this is an embarrassing scene, right? <sighs> yes, I think it's a part of getting help, is looking at it, okay. seeing it. But you sent this picture to one of your friends, didn't you? Uh, I don't recall. Um, if we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 252. We'll only be looking at the portion of this document. So if we could please call it Defendant's Exhibit 252A. 252A. And for ease, we've gone ahead and redacted it. Yes, I was asking for support. That's correct. There's no question yet, Ms. Heard. So directing your attention, I'm going to move to admit 
um, exhibit 252A. Any objection? Any objection, Ms. Bredo? Could you turn turn on? Could you turn your microphone again? I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I need to see it first because okay. I don't know what they redacted. Two five two. We redacted the identifiers and anything that's not misheard. Or up or down. Text right. messages consistent with hearsay. Maybe we approach. Okay. All right, so it looks like they're trying to introduce into evidence some text messages, uh, including a picture of Johnny Depp, the one you saw just a moment ago. We've seen it before in this trial. He, I guess there's melting ice cream in his hand. He was blacked out or had went to sleep after uh, what at least we were hearing was a bender. Again, I think even, it, even he admitted that he had, might have had too much to drink or too much drugs that particular night. So they're trying to figure out, make sure no hearsay is allowed in when they're going back and forth with these text messages. Let me quickly bring in my guest for this hour, criminal defense attorney and private investigator Karen Felicia Nance. Uh, so far, uh, this cross-examination has gone well in my estimation. Love to get your thoughts. I agree. I think that uh, Camille is doing a very good job. I think that Amber's coming off a little bit defensive. And unfortunately, I think she's to a certain extent pushing her attorneys under the bus in the sense that she's saying that I know I've produced all the evidence that I could have produced. But, um, you know, so it leaves the jury to say, well, did her attorneys not, not do their job? And so I think that to a certain extent, she's distancing herself from her attorneys and indicating I've done everything I can. So if you want to place blame, blame it on my attorneys. And I don't think that's a good move for her. I think she might, I think you're right. I think that may be one way it's coming across. But I think what she's saying is the court wouldn't allow those things into evidence. Now, again, I'm not sure why some of the things that were mentioned that have not been shown haven't been shown. For instance, I think you're referencing a picture that she had taken regarding those two black eyes. There was some other pictures as well. Um, but I don't think those were allowed into evidence for whatever reason. It could be a chain of custody issue. It could be they don't know where it came from or whatever. Um, so I think that's what she meant. Otherwise, that's what you're referencing? Yes, exactly. All right. So let's say the jury does see it that way, that she's distancing herself. Obviously, you're thinking that might have a negative effect on how her testimony is coming across. Actually, I'll hold that question because it looks like Camille is getting ready to go again. Camille Vasquez, the attorney for Johnny Depp, continues now with her cross-examination of Amber Heard. Sir, does this refresh your recollection that you did, in fact, send this picture to your friend, Rocky Pennington? Yes, I did. And you sent it to her on August 7th, 2014 at 11.24 p.m., correct? That is correct. So you sent Ms. Pennington this picture of Mr. Depp with ice cream spilled on him, right? That is correct. And you wrote, quote, this is what I've been dealing with, end quote. Did I read that right? You did read that right. That's correct. And this is you protecting Mr. Depp? That is me getting support from my best friend. This is you supporting Mr. Depp? This is me getting support from my best friend. I also need support. You weren't afraid the, the monster would get upset that you took this picture? This was um, opiate Johnny. This is a uh, different version of him. This is opiate on the nod, Johnny. And you weren't afraid that opiate Johnny or the monster, as you called him, would get upset that you sent this picture to your friend? Well, he's all of those things. Of course he could get upset. Of course, that's scary to me, of course. But did it stop you from sending this picture to your friend, did it? Why would it? Mr. Depp's hand, right hand is in his pocket, right, Ms. Hurd? In this yes, picture? that's correct. You also showed this jury 
pictures of cocaine. Do you recall that? Yes, that's correct. Let's please take a look at one of those. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 167A, which is already in evidence. Directing your attention, Ms. Heard, to the photograph. This is a photograph you took in March of 2013, right? That is correct. And this was taken at your apartment in Orange? Yes. And this is your breakfast table? That is correct. And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp left this breakfast table just the way you took it? That is correct. So this is what the table looked like after Mr. Depp had been doing cocaine? Uh, well, clearly he has yet to snort these lines. There are four lines of cocaine on this table, right, Ms. Hurd? In this picture, I see four lines. There isn't any cocaine residue around those lines, right? Uh, I, not that I can tell, no. Doesn't really look like anyone's been doing cocaine off that table, does it? With all due respect, I'm not sure you know how that works. I'm asking if you do. You've testified you've done cocaine. I have. Doesn't really look like Mr. Depp or anyone was doing cocaine off that table, does it? Uh, I beg to differ with you on that. When you snort cocaine, typically it goes into your nose. And then there's Doesn't stay residue. on the table. There's residue from that cocaine when your lips and nose touch the table, right? Well, the tampon applicator next to um, the credit card, I mean, um, driver's license that you see is a device that uh, I believe my sister had taught him to use in order to put the cocaine uh, in your nose. Mr. Depp is a pretty heavy smoker, right? He is. And, and that's a cigarette in the ashtray in the back there? Um, back right? Yes, it looks like one of his hand rolls. There's no other cigarettes in that ashtray, are there? I see one cigarette. The one that's not smoked? That's correct. There's no ash in that ashtray either, is there? Uh, not that I can tell in this picture. It's pretty clean. In this picture, it looks like it, yes. It's a pretty neat table. Wouldn't you agree? Um... Depends on what you would call neat, I suppose. And you sent this picture to your friend, Rocky Pennington, as well, didn't you? I sure did. And when you sent it, you said, quote, look at my morning, or something like that. Is that right? Yay for mornings. So you have a habit of sending stage photographs to your friend, Rocky, don't you? I had a habit of communicating with my best friend about what was going on in my life. You don't have any pictures of Mr. Depp actually consuming cocaine, do you? I don't think I have a picture of him mid-snort. No. You don't even have any pictures of Mr. Depp with cocaine. What do you mean by that? Holding cocaine, standing next to cocaine? Um... Sitting next to cocaine? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you haven't shown any of those pictures like that to the jury, have you? I don't know. I, no, I haven't. And you were never able to catch Mr. Depp with cocaine on film either, were you? I never tried. But you were able to catch him sleeping, right? Uh, I have seen him pass out in all sorts of places, yes. And you also captured a video of Mr. Depp in the kitchen that was played again for this jury today, uh, beating up some cabinets. Do you recall that? Sorry, say that again? You recall capturing Mr. Depp in the kitchen of one of his homes, beating up some cabinets? Yes. Slamming things around, yes. So you took that video of Mr. Depp in the kitchen, right? I did. I did. And you took it on one of your iPad devices? I took it on my iPad. You were deposed in August of 2016 in connection with your divorce proceedings from Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. And you will recall that the video of Mr. Depp in the kitchen was released online the day before your deposition in August of 2016, don't you? That's correct. 
you're the one who released that video. Incorrect. Isn't that true? That's incorrect. I flew in from another place at the time. I remember learning about it when I landed. So it's just a coincidence that the video you took of Mr. Depp was released the day before you were deposed in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp. I absolutely had nothing to do with that. I wouldn't even know how to do something like that. <coughs> you settled your divorce from Mr. Depp in August of 2016, right? That sounds right. And in connection with that settlement, you received uh, seven million dollars from Mr. Depp. True. That's correct. And then Six point eight, exactly. Your settlement amount was seven million dollars. That's correct. Okay. And then you released a statement in which you claimed you would be donating the entire seven million dollars to charity, right? That's correct. You stated you would be donating half of the seven million dollars to the ACLU. That's correct. And you would be donating the other half to Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. That is correct. And you also stated, with respect to the $7 million divorce settlement, that money played no role except for the extent that you could donate the money to charity. Yes, that's correct. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1259. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get you right back into the courtroom. You will not miss a thing. Keep it right here on Court TV. Load the free app now. How do you remember the first act of violence? Uh, well, you never forget it. That's how I remember it. It changes your life forever. You never forget the first time someone hits you like that. Hello, and welcome back to our coverage of Depp v. Heard, the dueling defamation suits trial. And right now, Amber Heard is on the stand. She's facing cross-examination from Camille Vasquez. She is the uh, attorney for, one of the attorneys for Johnny Depp. And she began the cross-examination by talking about an area of her testimony that is considered by many to be the weakest, the documentation, the medical reports, or lack of medical reports, police reports, and even the photos that just somehow don't seem to match up to the amount of violence claimed by Amber heard. She has moved on now as I take you back into the courtroom to talk about the divorce settlement and what happened to that $7 million. Let's get back into the court. This is an article entitled Amber Heard Donates Johnny Depp Divorce Settlement to Charity. Read her statement in full. Is that correct? That's what the title says, yes. Directing your attention to the portion on the second page where it says Quote, read the statement below. Is that the statement you released, Ms. Heard? That is correct. Your Honor, I move to admit the statement and the article as redacted. Objection, hearsay. It's her statement. It, it, this is not her statement. This is some... This she is, just testified, Your Honor, that it's her statement. Her statement. May I see the full? Uh, Everything else is redacted. Um, okay, then I have no objection. All right, one, two, five, nine in evidence as redacted. The statement reads, as described in the restraining order and divorce settlement, money played no role for me personally and never has, except to the extent that I could donate it to charity and in doing so, hopefully help those less able to defend themselves. As reported in the media, the amount received in the divorce was $7 million, and $7 million is being donated. This is over and above any funds that I have given away in the past and will continue to give away in the future. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. I don't remember that last line, but I have no... It doesn't stand out to me as wrong. There's nothing inaccurate in the statement. Not that I recognize, no. Mr. Depp donated $100,000 of the divorce settlement directly to the ACLU, is that right? Right at the beginning of the divorce settlement, he um, donated 100000 to each charity on my behalf or towards my contribution. So $100,000 to each to the ACLU? And to the Children's Hospital. 
and in response, you publicly demanded that Mr. Depp pay the divorce settlement directly to you instead of the charities, right? That was always the agreement, actually, is for him to pay me directly. It was not his money as per the settlement agreement to give away and reap a tax benefit from. I said if he wants to do it and give to charity all of a sudden, then he should pay the correct amount and not try to get a big tax break for it. So effectively for his tax bracket, he should be paying double that amount to the charity directly. And if he wanted to pay the charity directly, he could. He could do that was fine with me, but he would need to pay the adjusted amount. Ultimately, the rest of the $7 million divorce settlement was paid directly to you, right? Over time, yes. And Mr. Depp didn't end up paying the rest of the $7 million divorce settlement directly to the charities you identified. That is correct. He paid the installments to me. You stopped that from happening, didn't you? I don't understand what your question is. I'm sorry. You stopped Mr. Depp from paying the charities that you had named directly. That is incorrect. I said if you want to pay the charities directly, pay the adjusted amount, or pay as per our agreement in the settlement or in the divorce, as per our agreement. You also And he chose to do the former, not the latter. I mean, the other way around. You also publicly stated that the $7 million divorce settlement should be paid to the charities immediately in full, right? If he wanted to pay it in the way that he was suggesting, yes. And, and you said publicly that the payments to the charities should not be drawn out over many years, right? I said that, I don't, I don't recall the exact words that I used, but basically that he shouldn't use this as an op, a novel interest in getting a tax break, that if he wanted to do that and not pay me the settlement, that was fine, but he would have to pay the adjusted amount and not make it, you know, a, a commitment he would not fulfill or try to avoid in some other way. And that's because you wanted the entire world to think that you were donating every penny of the $7 million divorce settlement as soon as you received it from Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? No, I was going to be receiving it in installments and I would be paying in installments the donations. In fact, you released a statement in response to Mr. Depp's $100,000 donations to the ACLU and CHLA, didn't you? I don't recall. Let's see if we can refresh your recollection. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1260. <coughs> this is an article entitled Amber Heard and Johnny Depp Row Over Divorce Donations. And if I could direct your attention to where it says, I believe it's on the second page, her spokeswoman responded in a statement. The language Objection. that follows the statement you Objection. released. Objection, hearsay, right. spokeswoman, it's not her. Right. A spokesperson is an exception, Your Honor. You want to come forward? All right, what you're, what you're seeing now is, is one of the problems that comes up when you are someone in the public eye. Oftentimes, the things that are said, the statements that are released on your behalf, you're not the one actually making them. You may give general parameters, you may give some idea of the things you want to say, but the people who actually write this stuff is not that person. It's usually a spokesperson, someone professional, someone you pay to write it. So that's what they're dealing with right now in that sidebar. Should that statement that's actually not her words written, but written by someone else, how much of that can be permitted to show, be shown to this jury? All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll take this opportunity to step aside. We're going to hit the pause button. As soon as we come back, we'll get you right back in the courtroom. Keep it right here on Court TV. .com today. Hello, and welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Michael Ayala. After a week off to ponder the previous two weeks' court's proceedings, Amber Heard returned to the stand today to continue her direct examination. Now, she appeared rested and wore a very conservative hairstyle and clothing to match, but a few things jumped out at me. Number one, Team Depp and their attorneys have really doubled down on the objections, trying hard to keep sensitive information from getting in front of this jury. The question is, of course, 
Is it so aggressive one has to wonder how it looks to the jury? Will they interpret it as bullying or even that Team Depp is trying to keep something important away from them? The second thing that jumps out to me is Heard really has an explanation for everything, from choosing not to speak with police after the incident at Johnny's penthouse to how that grumpy got into bed. We even saw more photos today of Heard's alleged facial injuries, but is it ringing true or is something still not quite adding up? And finally, it is clear that her attorneys firmly believe that her op-ed was not about Johnny, but rather about her own experiences standing up to powerful men, and that it should be protected from civil suits by the First Amendment. You can bet the jury will hear a lot about that in closing arguments. All right, let's get you back into courtroom. Direct is over. They're on cross-examination. Let's get back in. Your Honor, the witness can testify as to whether this is a full statement or not. The, the witness can't do it. We, we have the right to be able to see the document. All right. Do you have a document that's not redacted? We can pull it up on our computers. Okay. Just give us a moment, Your Honor. All right. I can represent this is the full statement that's oh. reported. Okay. Give her an opportunity to look at the unredacted one. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, still with me, criminal defense attorney and private investigator Karen Felicia Nance. And Karen, um, quick question about the optics. It was brought up to me by my producer that uh, it's interesting that Camille Vasquez is doing the cross-examination. Now, that's, this is no question on her ability. She's doing a fantastic job. But do you think there's something behind the optics there in having a woman questioning Amber Heard? Absolutely. I think that um, you don't want her to feel, and you had expressed just that right before the break, it did appear that she's being, Amber's being bullied or attacked by uh, Johnny's team. And I think it comes off better with a cross by uh, Ms. Vasquez as opposed to Mr. Chu, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think it also, uh, one other point is that, you know, she's a woman representing Johnny. I mean, at the end of the day, Johnny's accused of violence against women. He is a woman who appears, at least, you know, the sense is that she's standing up there representing Johnny. And that, uh, you know, I think that's helpful for the jury in terms of optics saying, hey, here's a woman standing up for a guy accused of violence against women. I think she should be giving us Absolutely. Well, I understand. Well, we'll, we'll take care of that. But okay. as of um, right now... Can we continue? We can, Your Honor, but I have an objection because of uh, there's some quotation marks missing. Okay, come forward. All right, so Karen, let's continue about what might be going on here. Obviously, as I said earlier, many times celebrities, folks in the public eye, they have professional people who write their statements. Um, not exactly sure what they're quibbling over about this statement. Do you have any sense at all um, if there's an issue because she didn't write it or maybe there's information in there that they're worried about shouldn't be uh, put in front of this jury? I think that in this particular case, it might just be things taking out of context and, and Amber's attorneys are trying to make sure that things aren't that one sentence out of a whole paragraph is not focused on when we need to look at the whole document. And so the reference was there's something in quotes. So if that needs to be redacted, meaning kept out, then that's what uh, her attorneys are trying to make sure that the statement is, is taken in, in the proper context. Fair enough. All right, let's get back into the quote. All right. So directing your attention, Ms. Heard, where it says her spokeswoman responded in a statement. Your the Honor, language that follows. Your Honor, again, she can't read it. She has to show the it The language her. that follows. Right. If you want to lay the foundation to that. Go ahead. You released a statement after Mr. Depp donated $100,000 to the ACLU and $100,000 to CHLA. Correct, Ms. Hurd? I think so, yes. Okay. And the language that follows is the statement you released in response to Mr. Depp's donations, right? I don't know if this is this, the official statement. I really, I have no idea. The statement that reads, 
starts Objection, at your honor. Amber Heard. Yes. That's the only thing I'm gonna say. Would you please read that to yourself, Ms. Heard? Yes. Okay. Did you read all the way to the very bottom where the last word is supported? Yes. Okay. That's the statement you released through your spokeswoman after Mr. Depp made the donations to the CHLA and the ACLU, correct, Ms. Heard? I do not recall exactly what my statement was. I don't disagree with anything in the statement, but I just simply don't recall what the statement was we released. Is there anything inaccurate in that statement, Ms. Heard? No. Okay. I'm going to move to admit. Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation. No, I'll overrule the objection. 121260 in evidence over objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Statement reads, Amber Heard appreciates Johnny Depp's novel interest in supporting two of her favorite charities, the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union for Domestic Violence, and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. This is great and unexpected news. And it continues. However, if Johnny wishes to change the settlement agreement, we must insist that he honor the full amount by donating $14 million to charity which, after accounting for his tax deduction, is equal to his $7 million payment obligation to Amber. And it continues. We would also insist that the full amount be paid immediately and not drawn out over many years. Anything less would be a transparent attempt by Johnny's counsel, Laura Wasser, and Patty Glazer to reduce their client's true payment by half under the guise of newfound concern for charities that he has never previously supported, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Thank you. After this, you kept commenting about the donation of your divorce settlement, right? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Okay. You spoke about donating your divorce settlement on a Danish TV show, correct? Uh, I believe I said I had, um, I, I believe I said I donated it to charity, but it was already printed or already commented on and stated in the press. I had already released that information in the press. I think I just confirmed it on that show. You appeared on a show called RTL Late Night, right? I don't recall what, it, what show it was. If we could please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 346, which is a portion of your appearance on this program. And we would ask that it be moved into evidence and any, ask for permission to publish Honor, it. It contains, it has hearsay, it contains other communications with other individuals. Your Honor, if we may approach okay. very briefly. All right, I want to bring back in Karen Felicia Nan. She's a criminal defense attorney, private investigator, also has experience with domestic violence uh, cases and individuals. Um, Karen, this particular instance, again, I, it, it's clear that the issue is they don't want information that can be considered hearsay in these videos and these statements to be put in front of the jury. I get that. But I'm not 100% sure where they're going with this. I'm not sure how this is helping. Um, again, I, I don't know the end game. I have a sense of what it is. Uh, love to get your thoughts on whether where they're going with this, at least the way it seems where they're going, is, is helping Johnny. Well, I think that they're trying to prove that if she's inconsistent with uh, or not believable with regard to one thing, which is her statements regarding the settlement, then she shouldn't be believed about the op-ed. So I think they're trying to make that connection is just my my supposition, my my interpretation of why it's so um, important for them to be very specific about her statements, either in writing or on these TV shows. And so they're trying to show that there's this pattern, if not a pattern in practice, of her showing that she did have uh, a motive by uh, videotaping him and audio taping him and then doing the op-ed. So that's just a, a chain of, of, of behavior on her part. 
the, the other evidence that they're trying to produce, which is this TV show, and apparently there's more than just one uh, instance of, of her constantly making mention of the settlement. So I think that they're trying to make that connection here. Gotcha. So it has to do with her honesty. And again, uh, ticking away at her credibility. One of the other ways that they've been doing that is attacking the way she's looked after instances of domestic violence described by her, which involved some serious violence, but yet the pictures do not show that. It's very clear. Now they're claiming, of course, Amber Heard is claiming that she's covering it up with makeup. As someone who has experience in this fear of domestic violence, does that affect you at all? Do you, do you feel that's fair game? Obviously it is in a case like this, but does this make you feel some type of way when they're attacking her, her claims of being hit because she doesn't look like she was hit. Well, I think the problem is it's the severity of the type of abuse that she's testifying to. It's not just a, Karen, a I'm sorry snap. to have to cut you off. It, it, they're, they're getting ready to go again. So we'll get back to that in Got just it. a second. Let me take folks back into the court. All right, three, four, six in evidence. Good. Uh, there allegedly were all kinds of accusations uh, flying your way when you said all this. And then there was a divorce settlement. You got $7 million. People were saying this is all about the money. But then you did something that uh, twisted that whole argument. What did you do with that money? Seven million dollars in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los okay. Angeles. ACLU is a human rights organization. Sorry, ACLU is a prominent um, uh, organization, nonprofit organization in the United States. Yeah. It's called the American right. Civil Liberties Union and they work on behalf of marginalized communities uh, on the ground and in legislative reform. Right. And well, more power to you because that's that's something that I've never I heard I wanted of. nothing. This interview was in October of 2018, right, Ms. Heard? I don't recall when it was. It was in 2018, right, Ms. Heard? I don't remember when this was done. This was after you had received the full $7 million of your divorce settlement for Mr. Depp, wasn't it? Again, without knowing when it was recorded, I have no idea. The $7 million divorce settlement was paid to you in full by February of 2018, right? That's correct. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1458, which is already in evidence. the deal point memorandum from your divorce settlement, right, Ms. Heard? Yes, that's what it looks like. And if we go down to the bottom of page four. There's a heading labeled equalization payment. Do you see that? Yes. And underneath that, it outlines the payment schedule for the divorce payments, correct? Uh, yes. Well, it begins to, and if we go on page, page five. So the first payment is scheduled for August 31st, 2016, and that's 200,000, correct? Yes, that is correct. Mr. Depp's accountant, Edward White, testified that he made that payment directly you, you got to turn on your microphone, Ms. Bretterhoff. I'm not going to hear you. Objection to her testifying to what Mr. White testified to. That's okay. It's a actual, it, he literally testified to it in court. All overruled objection. Go Thank ahead. you, Your Honor. Mr. Depp's accountant, Edward White, testified that he made the payment directly to the ACLU and CHLA, correct? I believe so, yes. And then the rest of the payments were all made to you, weren't they? That is correct. And the final payment of $2.3 million is on February 1st, 2018, right? The final payment, yes. And you were here in court when Mr. White testified that the payments were all made on I'm schedule. An, I'm going to object to her testifying to what Mr. White testified to. Uh, Overall objection, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. And you were here in court when Mr. White testified that the payments were all made on schedule, right? I don't believe they were. Uh, he might have That's testified That's not my to question, Ms. Heard. My question was, you were here in court when Mr. White testified under oath 
that all the payments were made on schedule. I was here every day in court. I, I heard his testimony, yes. Okay. So back to October of 2018, this was before Mr. Depp sued you for defamation, correct? Yes, that's correct. He didn't sue you until after the op-ed came out in December of 2018, right? He sued me in 2019. And the op-ed came out in December of 2018? That is correct. So in October of 2018, you had received your entire $7 million divorce settlement. You would that, agree with me? That is correct. Okay. And you hadn't yet been sued by Mr. Depp? This is uh, October, correct. So in this October 2018 interview, you said that you had, quote, donated, end quote, your entire divorce settlement to charity, right? That's correct. And in fact, your exact words were, quote, seven million in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, end quote, that's, right? That's correct. I made that statement as soon as I got a divorce and we reached the settlement. That's when I pledged it right then. And you say this because you, quote, wanted nothing, end quote. That is correct. But you hadn't donated your entire, entire $7 million settlement to charity at that point, had you? That's incorrect. Sitting here today, Ms. Hurd, you still haven't donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. Isn't that right? Incorrect. I pledged the entirety no, of Ms. the Heard, settlement, that, $7 that's million that's to charity, question. and I, Ms. I Heard, intend to Ms. fulfill Heard, those obligations. Ms. Heard, that's not my question. Please. What was All right, so Camille Vasquez questioning where that money went and her commitment to the cause. Important stuff. We're going to hit the pause button, get right back in the courtroom when we come back. Keep it right here on Court TV. 2-8. Hello, and welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Michael Ayala. I want to take you back in the courtroom in just a second. We are an important part of the cross-examination now. Uh, Camille Vasquez is questioning Amber Heard about that $7 million pledge that she made to a couple of different charities. She pointed out that the divorce settlement was paid in February of 2018. Then she showed a video in October of that same year where Amber says she actually had donated the money and... It wasn't quite donated. We know that, right? We've heard that testimony already. And while Amber says the money may not have made it to where it was supposed to go because she was sued by Johnny Depp, well, Johnny didn't sue her until December of 2018. So something, again, is not adding up. Let's get back into the court. My question. Sitting here today, you have not donated the $7 million donated, not pledged, donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. They but do I the don't. Ms. Hurd, I don't use it synonymously. That's how donations are paid. Ms. Hurd, respectfully, that's not my question. As of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the ACLU. Yes or no? I have not yet. And as of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, correct? I have not yet. Johnny sued me. So as of today, you have not donated, paid $7 million of your divorce settlement to charity, right? I have not been able to fulfill those, uh, those uh, obligations yet. <coughs> and that's because you did want something, didn't you? I didn't want anything and I didn't get anything. You wanted Mr. Depp's money. Didn't get it, wasn't interested in it. I loved Johnny, that's why I was with him. You wanted praise for donating the money, right? That's incorrect. You wanted good press. In general, one <laughs> does want good press, yes. You wanted to seem altruistic publicly. Wasn't my interest. Um, my interest is uh, in my name and clearing my name and at the time, I was being called a liar and my motives were being questioned. I did see it as important to clear that up. I wanted to make a statement to make sure that there was not any doubt that I couldn't be labeled these things just because Johnny was a bigger star and had more publicity reach. You wanted to remind everyone of your claims of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, right? No, I wanted to move on with my life. You wanted to make those claims seem believable. 
They are believable. They you were wanted believable. them to be seen. You wanted to be seen, excuse me, as a noble victim of domestic violence. I have you? never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. Nor have you, I ever called myself one. You testified under oath that, quote, the entirety of your divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote, didn't you? That's correct. I pledged the entirety. No. Ms. Heard, my questions. Your counsel will have time to redirect you after. You testified under oath, quote, the entirety of your divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote. That is correct. I pledged the entirety. I'm going to move to strike everything after yes. Uh, all right. There's nothing to strike here. No. Ms. Hurt, is that really inappropriate? I, I'll sustain the objection and we'll just move forward. Thank you. Let's move forward. Next Thank question. You. Under oath, that statement wasn't true, was it, Ms. Hurd? I'm sorry, I don't follow your question. Sorry. You testified under oath, quote, the entirety of my divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote. That statement wasn't true. It is true. I pledged the entirety to charity. The statement... When you say you buy a house, you don't pay Ms. for the Heard, entire house Heard, at one time. You pay it I'm over not asking, time. Ms. Heard. All right, next question, please. Thank you. That statement isn't true today, as you sit here today, is it? It is true. I pledged the entirety. But you didn't charity. donate it. Unfortunately, you didn't donate it. It's a yes or no. I haven't been able to obligate. I mean, to fulfill those. So that's a no, right, Ms. Hurd? I am. I made the pledge. I want to be very clear. I pledged the entirety. I haven't been able to fulfill those pledges because I've been sued. You had all of the seven million dollars. All right. It's time for us to take a break. Top of the hour. Thanks to Karen, Felicia, Nance for being my guest. We'll be back in just a moment.